Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating draggable masks in Flash using ActionScript 3.0. That's kind of important because you're going to need Flash CS3 or CS4 um, or newer than that if newer has come out when you're watching this video. Uh, to follow along as you need ActionScript 3.0. Alright, and here's basically what we're going to be doing. Taking this nice blurred shape, we're going to go through exactly how to set all this up. Use a little bit of ActionScript, and I'm going to hit Control enter here to oh, make sure I have Flash selected. Control enter and it's going to launch the movie, and you can see we can just click and drag. We have this nice faded mask that can reveal any of our image below it. Very, very cool. We're going to take a look at how to do all of that and kind of play around with a couple other little things in ActionScript 3.0. Now, I don't need this file, so I'm going to close it, and we're going to start a fresh file new. We're going to choose Flash File, ActionScript 3.0. Again, you need Flash CS3 or newer to use ActionScript 3.0. Hit OK. We have a blank document now. You may have noticed Adobe Bridge pop in just a moment earlier. Uh, what I have happening here is this is my image, but what I want to do, well, there it goes again. Here we go. I'm going to select this image and I'm going to check out my metadata panel. And I can see that it's 600 by 450. So just for the sake of using this image, I'm going to change my stage size here in Flash to 600 by 450. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to uh, check out my properties panel under the properties section. Choose edit next to the size. And we've got all kinds of document properties. We just want to go 600 by 450. You can even set a background color and a frame rate here if you like. We're going to stick with white and a frame rate of 30. Hit OK. And there we have it. The next step is to bring up Adobe Bridge again or you could just go File, Import to Stage and choose your image. I however am just going to drag right from the bridge into Flash. and You can see there it is sitting on stage. To ensure that it is all the way tucked up in that corner with the image selected I'm going to check out the properties panel. I'm going to make sure X is set to 0. I'm going to hit tab and also make sure Y is set to 0. And there we go. The image is tucked perfectly into that top corner and fits just wonderfully right here on our stage. Next, I'm just going to double click the layer name here in the timeline panel and I'm going to name this layer IMG. We also want to select this image and go ahead and choose modify convert to symbol note the hotkey f8 really great hotkey you're going to use it all the time if you don't already convert to symbol movie clip symbol registration can be the center it could be the top left corner doesn't really matter in this case and i'm just going to name this mc image i'm going to hit ok and this will now appear here in my library panel you can see movie clip mc image there we go. And this is just the image that gets placed in there automatically when you import an image. Uh, it just gets kind of put in your library. So now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and give this an instance name right now before we forget. So make sure you have the image selected. Right here on the properties panel we have our instance name input field. We're going to uh, call this, actually let's just call it IMGMC. I believe that's what I did in the original. IMG underscore MC is the instance name. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and create two new layers. I'm going to drag this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Two new layers. I'm going to name the first one here, Mask. And I'm going to name the second one, AS, for uh, Action Script. Now that we've done that, on the Mask layer, I want to draw my mask shape. And this can be anything. Use any of the drawing tools you like. I'm going to go ahead and just use the Polystar tool. Um, now you may notice the strange name Polystar uh, and that basically is because this not only creates polygons but it also can create stars here if I go to tool settings style star. We're going to stick with the, the polygonal or polygon shape I should say. I don't want to go off and try to sound like I'm too smart when I don't know what I'm talking about. So we're going to stick with a polygon and uh, it can be whatever color you want because the color really is not going to be seen in the end at all. Uh, it's just going to be what you see here in the Flash Authoring tool. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out uh, a nice polygon, like so. And select it and just drag it right down here. Not really for any particular reason, just to, you know, matter of fact, I'm going to drag it over here into the dark section. So when we set up the mask, nothing's really going to be revealed until the user starts dragging the mouse. What we want to do now is go ahead and convert this to a symbol as well. Remember that hotkey F8, convert to symbol. I'm going to name this MC 
mask. Again, we're converting this to a movie clip. This is kind of important that we convert this to a movie clip because what we're going to do with action script, uh, you can only really do to a movie clip symbol. So we're going to go movie clip, hit OK. And now that we've done that, we want to give this a, uh, an instance name as well. MC, or excuse me, not MC. We're going to call this mask. If I can spell mask correctly, underscore MC. There we go. Now that we've done that, we're ready to start uh, using action script. So the first thing we want to do uh, as far as action script is concerned, well, number one, choose the action script layer and then go window actions. Again, note the hotkey F9. Big, big hotkey if you want to stick around and use flash a lot. Uh, it really helps to just be able to pull that actions panel up without having to go up to window actions all the time. I'm going to drag it fully on screen here. And I'm also going to make sure that I have my text set to a size that you guys can see. Set that to about 20. Hit OK. That was off screen, by the way, the OK button. All right, so here on line one, uh, we just want to type something very, very simple. We're talking to the image movie clip. Remember, its instance name is IMG underscore MC. We're going to say, hey, image uh, mask. All right, and, and then we need to say your mask equals what? What does your mask equal? Well, it's going to equal that other movie clip, mask underscore MC. That is going to be masking the image. So the mask of the image equals mask underscore MC. Uh, before we do anything else, let's check this out. Let's just hit control enter the command return on the Mac. And you can see right there we have our shape and we can't see any of the rest of the image. Great. Now what I want to do is go in there and just make this mask follow the mouse button. We're going to kind of play around with it a little bit. So again on the action script layer, bring up the actions panel, hit enter or return once and we're going to go ahead and add an event listener. We're just going to type add event listener and then open parenthesis and we're going to say event with a capital E dot enter underscore frame and enter underscore frame that's all caps comma and we're just gonna say mask F that's the name of the function that we're triggering every time flash enters a new frame which is going to be 30 times a second because our frame rate is 30 frames per second so now we need to create that mask F function so I'm gonna type function mask F open parenthesis uh, events without a capital E colon event with a capital E close parenthesis colon and the word void open curly bracket enter return twice close curly bracket up arrow key now inside of this function all we want to do is basically say look the X and Y of the mask we always want them to equal the X and Y of the mouse the mouse cursor so I'm gonna say mask uh, underscore MC dot X space equals space mouse capital X semicolon now that we've done that go on to the next line we're gonna type ma mask underscore MC dot Y space equals space you probably know where I'm going mouse capital Y semicolon all right now that we've done that I am going to close my f my actions panel I'm gonna hit control enter command return to check it out and you can see wherever I move the mouse uh, the the uh, our shape is following now you might notice that the mouse is kind of hovering above the top left corner that's because that's where that registration point for this movie clip is so that's where the X and Y point uh, are measured from that top left corner so there if you had put the registration point in the very center then that's where we'd be measuring it from and the mouse would be dead center of our mask just something to keep in mind because there are going to be times where you want to be able to control uh, that kind of exacting you know position of the mouse cursor I'm going to close this. And the next thing we want to do is make this mask a mask that doesn't follow the mouse unless the mouse is clicking and dragging on it. Then we want the, the mouse to essentially drag this mask around and just, you know, reveal whatever the user wants to see. So I'm going to select this AS layer again, hit F9 and bring up my actions panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to junk all of this code. But we just spent all the time write, all this time writing this code, so we don't just want to throw it out. We might want to save it for future reference. And uh, just I would just remember that we have this little bit of code in this file. And I'm just going to hit this apply block comment icon right there. That's going to comment out all of that code. That code is now just being ignored by Flash. So we're going to push it down there. Don't get distracted by it. And here I am on line three, ready to rock. What we need to do is add two event listeners, one to mask underscore MC. So we're going to do that. Add event listener. And here we want to say mouse with a capital M, event with a capital E as one word, dot mouse 
underscore down, and again, that's in all caps. Then we're just going to say comma uh, D capital F for drag F, drag function. Closed parenthesis, semicolon. We move down to the next line, and I'm going to type the word stage dot add event listener. Now, the reason we're adding this event listener to the stage, I'll explain in just a moment. We're going to go add event listener, and again, open parenthesis, mouse event dot, this time, mouse underscore up, comma, and this time we're going to say drop F close parenthesis, semicolon. The reason that I'm placing this event listener on the stage, essentially, is because when the user lifts the mouse button, sometimes the mouse, uh, the cursor has started sliding off of your object, and this becomes especially noticeable when you're dealing with smaller objects such as sound sliders, things like that. We've got a pretty large size mask, so it probably won't be an issue but we're going to be safe and just apply this event listener to the stage because this way whenever the user lifts up the mouse button or lets go of the mouse button and the mouse is anywhere above the stage it's going to automatically trigger this function which is going to say hey look stop dragging that mask um, and if the mouse just isn't dragging the mask well it's not going to do anything but if it is dragging the mask it's going to stop dragging the mask um, so it might be a little hard to, to conceptualize what's happening, but if you work with small objects that are being dragged, such as like little sound sliders, or if this was a smaller mask, things like that, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about because sometimes when you let up off the mouse, uh, your little object is still being dragged all over the place by the mouse. So that's kind of the solution for that. We're going to hit enter return a couple times and type function D capital F, open parentheses, event with a lowercase e, colon mouse event just as we have up there in our event listener close parenthesis colon the word void open curly bracket enter return twice close curly bracket up arrow key now inside of this function we basically just want to say hey mask underscore mc dot start drag open and close parenthesis semicolon now i would try to test the flash movie now but you actually have to at least specify this drop function, uh, otherwise Flash is going to throw an error right at the runtime. So I'm just going to grab this entire function, hit Commander Control C to copy, enter a return a couple times, paste it in right here, and I'm just going to change the name to drop F. And here we're going to say mask underscore MC dot stop drag. So where DF is saying, hey, grab that mask and start dragging it, drop function is actually going to say, hey, Stop dragging that mask around. It's just not nice. So I'm going to close the actions panel here. Control, enter, command, return. Let's check to see what we've got. Notice right off the bat, the mask is not following the mouse button around. And when I click and drag, nothing is happening. Let's go back to our actions panel and uh, add one other line of code here that is basically going to be telling Flash, hey, this is a movie clip we're dealing with, but we want you to treat it like a button. So right up here under img underscore mc dot mask, we're going to type mask underscore mc dot button mode space equals space true. All right, and what this is going to do is now when we roll over this mask, which before did not drag, we're, we're not only going to be able to drag it, but we are going to also see the little, you know, default, you know, cursor that's going to say, hey, look, I'm a draggable thing in Windows, you know, at least with the, the theme or whatever, the default Vista theme, it's a little, you know, hand with a finger. Um, so you're going to see something similar to that, more than likely. Command or control, uh, command enter, or control enter, command return, and you can see here, we can now drag our mask around. Very, very cool. So that is how to create a clickable and draggable mask. What we want to do to sort of top this whole effect off is go ahead and really blur this shape to death. We're going to blur it until you can't even tell what kind of shape it is, or at least get close to that. So because it's a movie clip, uh, we can come under the filters uh, area right here and go ahead and choose to add a filter. I'm actually going to drag my properties panel out here so we can actually see what's going on with these filters. Collapse as much as I can here. Hey, get in there. All right, collapse all that stuff, which is not going to let me collapse, whatever. Uh, right down here at the bottom of the filters panel, we're just going to choose, well, we're going to choose new filter and then choose blur. And I want to set a really hefty blur to this guy, something like 60 pixels. 
All right, and because I've got them linked together, it's going to do 60 along the X and 60 along the Y. Quality can stay at low. I'm not that that concerned about it. If you really are concerned about the blur quality, well, just choose a higher uh, quality. I'm going to stick with low for now just because I'm a low kind of guy. And uh, there we go. We'll drag the properties panel back into the dock. And now let's test the movie. Control Enter or Command Return. Notice what we have going on. Not only are we now not able to drag our mask like before we added that little bit of button mode uh, action script, but it's it's you know not even giving me that little finger saying hey I'm still a button. It's because we need to add a couple more lines of code now because we have you know this blur happening where essentially we have some see through stuff and this uh, movie clip essentially is interacting with the image behind it. We need to go ahead and tell Flash to yes cache both of these movie clips as bitmap images. That's going to allow Flash to, you can think of it as processing them the right way to really, you know, show this mask the way we want this mask to be showed. So I'm going to go ahead and hit F9, again, making sure that I have the AS layer selected. And all I'm going to do is right up here on line 3, I'm going to say IMG underscore MC dot cache as bitmap. Space equals space, true. Add a semicolon, and I'm going to do the same thing with the mask. Mask underscore MC dot cache as bitmap space equals space true and add a semicolon that's all we need to do close up the actions panel by hitting f9 control enter command return you can see well we're actually getting our blurred mask and we're getting the little finger and when we drag we have a nice interactive blurred mask and you can sort of see the effect of having a low quality blur there's some striping going on but really a really cool effect and really really easy to pull off only a couple lines of code really pretty simple a few lines of code a couple functions to you know start and stop the dragging and that's it so i hope you learned something from this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it. Please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.